All right, thanks. Yeah, we're going to be talking about deobfuscation uh, of the agent drainer. We got 20 slides to go over in 10 minutes. So good luck to us all. I'm Shahar. Uh, I've been doing security for the past 15 years, uh, about three years at Fireblocks, where I lead the product security team. Uh, we protect 200 million wallets for our 2,000 customers worldwide. Um, and before jumping, I also want to give a shout out to Matan from my team, whose work has been the backbone of uh, a lot of this presentation. So hopefully you've heard about the engine drainer, but if you haven't, it's one of the most notorious drainer kits out there. Uh, it's been responsible for major losses, over $20 million for hundreds of thousands of uh, victims. And it also recently merged with its uh, rival. So it just became stronger and more complex. So when you look at that, it's pretty obvious it's, a, it's an ever-evolving persistent threat in this industry. So we should study it. But when you want to study the code, you see that obfuscation is holding you back. And this is what made us jump into this research and understand how it's working and how we can remove it. So what's obfuscation? Obfuscation essentially is turning this piece of code into something that's really complex to understand, uh, to read, and to get to the bottom line of. Why would you do that? From a malware developer perspective, from an attacker's perspective, you want to slow down, you want to get uh, uh, resilience for your malware. So you want to make reverse engineering hard. You want to slow down researchers. You want to limit detection capabilities. You want to drain wallets at scale. You want to make profit. Side note, there are some, some legitimate use cases for obfuscation, like protecting your IP rights. It's not all bad, but in this case, it's really bad, and you want to tackle it. So why deobfuscate? Well, the exact opposite. We want to make reverse engineering and debugging really easy. We want to boost researchers. We want to make uh, uh, our detections better. We want to protect wallets at scale, and we want to present at DSS. So in terms of goals for our research, we have three goals here. We want to be able to understand the code. So we want to be achieving clarity, removing all the obfuscations and, and, and uh, have the code easy to read. But that's not enough. We want to be able to also execute and debug the code because we do not believe in just static analysis. And finally, we want to leverage open source wherever possible because we don't have to recreate and reinvent the wheel. So I'll start with the shout outs of projects that have been important for our work. Um, Couple first, Unminify and Webcrack are doing an amazing job with removing some of the obfuscation. Uh, we had to build on top of that, and I'll expand on this in a, in a second. So Unminify removes the minification of JavaScript code, and Webcrack does some of the op uh, deobfuscation, removes some of the uh, anti-debugging mechanisms. Lastly, Babel is an amazing framework uh, to uh, work with JavaScript code. You can think about this as a parser for JavaScript, uh, so we don't have to write the entire thing ourselves. So jumping in, looking at the Angel uh, JavaScript kit, we see like any malware loader at the first stage is just loading a payload. Um, it was minified code, meaning it had almost one half million characters in one line. Uh, so we had to run it through Unminify, and when we ran it through Unminify, we got this. Um, in the yellow box, you can see the encoded payload. This is essentially compressed with XZ and then encoded in base64. When it sends it, this is what it does. So we did the reverse. We uh, uh, decoded and then decompressed, and we get this. So this is, as you can see, it's a lot of code, and you can maybe uh, spot some uh, computation going on, which is a good sign for uh, obfuscation and unpacking going on. And you'd be correct, 
after unpacking, we see a code that's uh, obfuscated with obfuscator.io, which is a very common JavaScript obfuscation uh, um, website. It's protecting the core logic, so we want to go uh, uh, and break it. We tried a couple projects. Uh, we saw that WebCrack did a way better job in terms of keeping the code debuggable, so we can actually uh, uh, use it, which is one of our uh, goals here. So we chose it, and we got into this. This is a code snippet out of 280,000 codes, line of codes uh, uh, that we have. And WebCrack helped, but we can still see some funny struct and some indirect relations between different parts of the code. Specifically, we're going to identify three players here, which are going to beat one by one. Call them E, D, and W. OK, you can see on the, on the green box where uh, E is being defined, uh, is being called and defined on top, and uh, with D also some kind of indirect call to another function. So first thing we did, which allowed us to remove uh, and simplify remove E from the equation, was to use Babel, transform the code into AST, an abstract uh, syntax tree, which essentially, again, parsing JavaScript, looking at the code in a logical way, you can think about this as sort of a smart find and replace. So whenever we see a, a, a mention, we can just replace it with the direct uh, code or the direct string and have the code way easier to understand. Now this is still, the end goal would be a clear, easy to understand JavaScript code, and this is not it yet, right? We can still see some, some funny things going on, so numbers, and the next target is, is D, okay? You can easily see that strings are missing, right? Like with any JavaScript code, uh, references to structs, references to uh, JSON objects are, doing by, uh, are dealt by strings, and that's missing here. So we realize this is a string uh, um, mapping, essentially, and we tried to reverse engineer it. Now, that was hard. So instead, we did some pre-processing and then realized it may be easier to just run it. So we created a standalone version of that function and ran it through on a sandbox environment, uh, as you should do with all malicious code. Uh, we ran it through the entire code and it used the actual the unpacking function to remove that complexity. You can see this is now way better way easier to understand, but we still haven't gotten to our uh, bottom line, which is to get code that is as clear as if you wrote it yourself. But we are getting there. And so the final route was to get both readability, perfect readability, and executability. Uh, we did run around of AST simplification after the the string fetching, um, which was like uh, on dynamic execution. And finally, in order to debug it, we had another round, final round of WebCrack, which removed all the anti-debugging uh, features that were present on the engine runner, which allowed us to get to this code. Which meaning after a few weeks of work or nine minutes of uh, presenting, we got to realize this is actually just closes the pop-up, which is amazing. Um, which kind of shows you the benefit of obfuscating the code from an attacker's perspective, right? It's, we had to work really hard to get to a function that really doesn't do anything important. But once we solved that, we solved everything, and now we can inspect the code, we can debug it while it's being run and while it's being uh, trying to drain us. So, because this is a research presentation, summary and future work, so we achieved uh, executability and readability of the code like, uh, like we wanted to. And if you want to dive in, I recommend first you'd look at Angel X, which is the latest version of the agent drainer. Um, a good starting point is Blockhead's research, which is up on their blog. Uh, and also the on-chain command and control mechanism that Angel uses, uh, which leverages uh, smart contract storage in a cool way. Um, really recommended to dive in. And that's it. 
thank you uh, for coming and listening. You can find us on uh, Twitter and in person. <laughs>